Greetings to all of you, man. It is really a joy, it's a pleasure, it's an honor to be greeting you. And I'm right here, right now, sitting in my backyard, bringing this message of emancipation to you, this message of self-realization, whereby I'm pointing you to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity. And that is why the reason, and that's the reason why I want to speak to you concerning Abdullah, Neville Goddard, and the sacred energy. And when I speak about the sacred energy, I'm speaking about sacred energy exchange. Sacred energy exchange is the meaning of the word S-E-X. So that's what I want to speak to you about. I want to speak to you concerning sexual transmutation and how Abdullah taught Neville Goddard about sexual transmutation. And I'm going to show you this truth in the experience whereby Abdullah told Neville that when he would have proven that imagination creates reality and he would have taken his trip to Barbados that he would drink, he would smoke, he would have sex and do a lot of things that he was never uh, been doing in his life before because of his new understanding of how the universe works and how the laws of the universe, how they govern humanity. So here we see Neville, he tried smoking and he tried drinking and he prefer was to drink than to smoke and he no longer had any shame or any guilt about sex or about marriage and divorce and all of these things that the system put in place to keep us in guilt, shame and condemnation. Now, let, let me go in to what I really want to bring across to you. Now, the word S-E-X means sacred energy exchange. And that energy is the creative energy. And everyone is using that creative energy. Some are using that creative energy unconsciously, and some are using that creative energy consciously. Now, in the book, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill made a short mention of sexual transmutation and many fail to realize that the message that Neville has been teaching which he received from Abdullah is the same message that Think and Grow Rich is based upon, is the same message that the law of attraction is based upon and it is the same message that all these wealthy people around the world that's what they are based upon and that is why my encouragement to you is not to allow the religious system to brainwash you do not allow the political system to brainwash you do not allow the school system to brainwash you you're more powerful than you think and the very thoughts that you have which can be either creative or destructive, it's all sexual. Because the one great energy that we all use in this world, it's the sexual energy. And that is why whenever I go into meditation, I harness the sexual energy from this part of my body, the lower part of my body, and I bring it upward and send it out into the universe to bring me my manifestation. Now, when you understand the law of sowing and reaping, when you understand the giver and the receiver, when you understand that when a, a man and a woman comes together and they bring forth a child, it is referred to as procreation. You will understand that we are all creators 
and you can be a deliberate creator. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, you are the Lord and master of your own destiny and you can create your reality consciously if you understand that a desire is a spiritual sensation. And when you have that spiritual sensation and you believe in the unseen and you be remain loyal to the unseen, you would experience an impreg you would experience an impregnation. And when you receive that impregnation and you live in the end, you live as though it's already been done. You will bring forth the birth, which is the manifestation. You will give birth to your child, the thing you love, the thing you desire. Most people think in terms of the physical and all they can see is that when, when you come together with this sacred energy, it's going to bring a baby. But many people do not realize it's the same energy that invented the telephone, the same energy that invented the automobile, the aeroplane, the very video camera that I'm looking through right now. It was the same energy. And that is why the church has always been against the use of this creative energy by keeping the knowledge away from the masses. So even Abdullah taught Neville that when you have a pregnancy, there isn't such a thing as a big pregnancy or a small pregnancy. Leave it, let it grow. Allow the law of gestation to take place whereby everything has a time and a season. For example, the chicken. It takes 21 days for the egg to hatch. And it is a sexual act whereby the male bird has, would have gone with the female bird. And then the trees, they're going to bring forth in their time and their season. And it's a sexual act also. And then you look at the animals, like the sheep, the goat, the horse, the donkey, and so on. And you see like the sheep and the goat. It might be three months, four months before it brings forth. But when it comes to the horse or the donkey, it's going to take 12 months before it can bring forth. And when you look at us, who's having this human experience, it takes 12 months for the manifestation, for the bringing forth, for the expression in this three dimension. So my brother and my sisters, if you're going to create and you're going to create consciously, you can't expect to have a mentality of shame and guilt towards your own sexuality. You can never be aware of your creative energy and believe the marriage that the system gives to you. I'm encouraging you, if you haven't read my book, The Truth About Marriage, to get that book and read that book, The Truth About Marriage. Neville wanted us to tell you about the truth concerning marriage. But you have to read between the lines. There are many people who say that there isn't much that has been said about Abdullah by Neville, but that's not true. When you learn to read between the lines and you realize there's so much information that Neville gave concerning Abdullah in, in such few words, you would realize how you have to take something that has been said in the true light of awareness and expand it. And that is why I can make this channel concerning Abdullah and Neville. And I can say so much concerning Abdullah. Because we can channel all the energies. Because they're right here. It's just a different dimension. It's just a different band of frequency. So you can go into that frequency and know what was meant to be fed to humanity. And that is why we got to grab a hold of our sexuality. 
and understand that when we grab a hold of our sexuality, it is a key. And it will go against secular Christianity where they try to make you believe that the Bible is a book of morality. But it was just a control system that they wanted us to use to control the most powerful creative energy that you can use consciously. So my brother and my sisters, Neville was teaching you that if you're going to learn to create and you're going to create abundance or you're going to create consciously knowing of your sexuality is key knowing the true meaning of sex is key understanding marriage is key when you understand true union of the conscious and the subconscious mind of your inner self and your outer self when you understand that the wall is yourself pushed out. You would not hold the false identity. You wouldn't be going and say you're going to march against homosexual and lesbian and all of these people who choose to live their life the way how they see it. There must be a balance. If they're going to be a good woman, it takes a bad woman to show you a good woman. It takes day to teach you that there's a night. It takes darkness to teach you that there is light. And that is why I am saying all of this because could you believe the people in my country who believe in secular Christianity who was marching against homosexuality? Do you know that the people who, so, who are actually who have hatred towards people based on their lifestyle choice? That's their lifestyle choice. <laughs> And they so focus on trying to change other people instead of focus on changing themselves. It's a sacred energy. And a person can use this sacred energy whichever way they want to use this sacred energy. We are, not a, we are not a judge of anyone. By the fruit it shall be known. Everyone will pay a price with the way they use the energy. Everyone would have to face their karma. So my brother and my sisters, I'm saying all of this, that we can become more conscious, that we can become more aware. For example, in my country, when I try to tell people, do not vibrate on the lifestyle that people are choosing, such as like homosexuality and lesbianism, because when you do that, you're breathing more of it. Because if you think about that which you do not want, you're actually attacking it. And if you think about what you want, you're attacking it because why? The subconscious mind doesn't know the difference as long as you use your feeling, your emotion. The subconscious mind is going to receive it as feeling. And when it receives it as feeling, it must give you back that which you would have sown. So my brother and my sisters, let me continue to speak to you as the wind keep blowing. But let me say this. I'm living here in the Caribbean and there's so much people in the Caribbean who are under such ignorance of self and of self-knowledge and there's so many who are actually even against the Bible believing that they are woke and they still caught up in false identity in terms of their nationality and in terms of race and still pointing the fingers of things that they, was, they were taught as their history and so for example a place like Jamaica in the Caribbean they're so homophobic that they are increasing more and more and more of that kind among themselves and they do not realize that they are the ones who are creating it and when I try to speak to people in my country who refer to themselves as Rastafarian and Rastaman and show them the ignorance their ego wouldn't allow them to realize hey you're creating that stop thinking that if two people want to walk down the road holding hands that's their life 
and the and the and the, 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 the stupid thing about it is is that like in my country for example two two men do not want to be seen in the front in the front seat of a vehicle like for example they have the the, 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 the public transportation and they have the driver and they have a seat for two more persons the men if a man is in the front of a vehicle and another man comes in the front to sit he would leave and go back in the back he rather sit amongst the three four men in the back of the vehicle than to be seen in the front sitting sitting in the front of the vehicle next to a man so it's like it's like it's wrong to have three men sitting in the front of a vehicle so what they do they open the door okay and allow the woman to come and sit in the middle it's stupidity so i'm saying all of these things because you know people are so um ignorant of their own sexuality and how conscious they, they are to be that i have to really go on and and and, and stress on, on all of these things but the main point i want to get to you is that when you become more aware of who you are and you become more aware of your your your, your sexual power and become more aware of your creativity and your true identity to be your divinity you'll be able to create consciously and you will understand your sexuality and other people also you will understand how to deal with them on a conscious level because you have a better understanding of your experience here and so my brother and my sisters there's only one universal consciousness. There's only one uh, collective. There's only one divine mind. And we are connected to that divine mind. So we are one. So the rich man, the poor man, the beggar man, the thief. That's myself pushed out. The white man, the Japanese man, the Chinese man. You name it. They are all myself pushed out. Many different versions. Myself. Variety is the spice of life. We are one. Just one consciousness. All of us go to the toilet. All of us blood is the same color. All of us eat the food to live. All of us breathe, breathe the same air. But the system has put so many things in place to keep us separated. So my brother and my sisters, my encouragement to you is to use this energy to create your reality consciously. You can use this energy with uh, your partner or you can use this energy with yourself, okay? Um, I can go much more deeper into all these things that I'm saying, but I'm putting some things together, okay, that would, you know, expand your consciousness far, far much even more. So I wouldn't go into certain things at this moment, okay, because I believe I would have given you a mouthful and give you enough that you can chew upon to learn to use this energy and use it wisely having the right concept and use it to create your reality consciously lose use it to attract money use it to attract wealth use it to attract anything that you want in this world so with that being said my brother and my sister i want to thank you very much and i want to say to you if this is the first time that you're listening to me and what i'm saying to you if it makes sense to you then it is for you and I would like to say to you that if you haven't subscribed, uh, subscribed already, I'm encouraging you to subscribe, to like, to comment, uh, to share this video. But before I go, I want to let you know that this message I bring to you, as usual, that it is the single eye, yes, the single eye message of self-realization, of which Matthew 622 says that if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. And my brother and my sisters, hadn't it been that sing that, that single eye has been opened within me? And I awake within myself like a fiery being. I will have heard the unearthly wind and ascend and roll the stone away and came out and realized that my body is the tomb in which Christ was buried. I wouldn't have been here bringing this message to you, saying to you that when you have the experience, you come to realize that it is the rising of the S U N in a S O N and that it is the dawning of a new day in your life. And you will come to also realize that the sun, as in the S-U-N, parallels the human imagination. The human imagination parallels the sun. 
For without the sun, there is no life, and there is no light. And without the human imagination, there isn't anything made that was made. That's why I always say to you, don't let anyone deceive you to believe that the single eye and the US dollar is a symbol, an evil symbol. No, it is not an evil symbol. It's a symbol of the all-seeing eye of God in you, which is your own human imagination for you with the experience and awakened imagination. And that's why I always put my hand above my crown chakra because you both, your crown chakra and go beyond your skull. And you come to realize that it is your birth, your new birth. And you will come to realize why I always say that the, that the, um, the sun parallels the human imagination, the human imagination parallels the sun. And why in Psalms 84 11, you are told that the Lord thy God is a sun and a shield and no good thing would he be told from you. And also why you are told in Malachi 4 and 2 that the sun as in the S-U-N of righteousness shall arise in you with healing in his wings. That's the light I am speaking of my brothers and my sisters. And that's the secret energy exchange that we all are using in this world. And I'm just teaching you how to use it consciously. That's why I'm saying to you right now to use your mind power, which is your solar power, your sun power, your God power, your creative power, your sexual power to achieve your every desire. So with that being said, I want to say peace. Love you all. I'm out.